A lot of businesses are using it to write things like script for production houses, write scripts. Some developers are using it to, you know, help with coding, um, writing um, code for applications, writing content for social media, or use cases, writing a book. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably noticed that artificial intelligence is taking over and ChatGPT has emerged as one of the top new AI tools right now. So how can you maximize this for your business? Well, I'm Khalilo Reynolds and it's time for another episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's business advisory service, giving you the tools to grow your business. My guest today is Kevon Brown, the co-founder and chief design officer at Vota Virtual Solutions. Welcome back, Kevon. Thank you for having me. You're like our resident techie <laughs> every time we need to talk something tech. Yeah. I think you might have been the first person in our little circle to tell us about ChatGPT yes. a few months ago, and now it's all the rage. So for those who still don't know what it is, what is ChatGPT? Okay, so ChatGPT, I'm just going to define some things. GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And this version is three. So there have been two other versions before. So the one that we're interacting with now is the latest version. Now, ChatGPT is just a chatbot form of GPT, if that makes any sense. So before, you would have to interact with it in, in another way, whether by uh, uh, sitting at a computer, going through code, and having to go through a web app. Now, they've put it in a chatbot where you can just type, and it responds to you. So it's trained off of data all the way up to 2021. So everything that it has been trained to respond on is what you're able to interact with. So anything after 2021, it won't know. And you will have to probably train it to tell it that, hey, this is the right thing or this is the information that you should have given that we're now, this has changed. Mm. I heard that if you that the free version is up to 2021 and the paid right. version you can get more recent stuff, no? The paid version is being updated, but it's still limited to 2021. But it's you will get those who are on it, which is ChatGPT Plus, you will get more updated training data faster than everyone else. So why is everybody so obsessed with it right now? What's the hype? Well, the hype is there's it's quite an interesting development in, in our technology world. Um, I think it is probably one of the greatest, I won't say discovery because it's been around for a while, um, but it's one of the greatest breakthroughs that we have seen in probably the past 10 years. And the reason why I say that is because it, it has the ability to disrupt so many industries in so many different ways, just based on how it's applied. So if you, well, there is a running idea that, you know, it's gonna put designers out of jobs, gonna put marketers out of jobs, gonna put so on and so forth out of job. There's I heard a, Google is even worried. They have it as right, like a red alert or something. Right, Google is now shaping up to fight this AI war, war because Microsoft is a heavy investor in OpenAI, which, is the, which are the creators of ChatGPT. And uh, they have now incorporated it into Bing. Um, it's not fully live for everyone yet, but there is a developer version available and you can actually use chat GPT in Bing. And of course, you know, Bing people, is their search engine. Right, Bing Microsoft is their search engine. Answer to Google. Right, and interesting to note, chat GPT currently in its form on chat GPT is not able to search the internet. So you will get very limited results. And of course, it's only based on data that has been trained up to 2021. Mm. With integration with Bing, it has the ability to search the web, which makes it even more powerful. Because mm. I'm waiting for when ChatGPT, I can tell it, just read this book for me and summarize it, but it can't do that just yet. So what are the use cases right now of ChatGPT? What are people, especially the businesses, right. using it for? A lot of businesses are using it to write things like script for production houses, write scripts. Some developers are using it to, you know, help with coding, um, writing um, code for applications, writing content for social media or use cases, writing a book. There has actually been someone who wrote a book using ChatGPT. Um, given the way it works, 
you know, it's tokenized. And to explain that, it is every character is based off of a certain amount of tokens. So let's say 500 words is amount to 10 tokens. Your What is a token? All right. So a token is, is, very, is very tech heavy. So plainly speaking, a token is simply a value that is used to represent a character in what the AI responds. So if I say cheese, the value of the token is basically amount to each letter in the word cheese. Mm. So the token value can be different based on the amount of words used because mm. of how the AI operates. It's a prediction type of engine, so it doesn't flow like that. It tries to predict your responses and scans through every single possible word in existence to say, this is the best response I should give based on what you're asking me. And all of that is characterized by tokens. So it's a little confusing, to be honest, um, but it's explained a little bit on OpenAI's website. All right, so show us how it works. Sure. So with ChatGPT, this is what interface looks like. And as you can see, it's a similar chatbot form. Now, the idea is that you are to type in the prompt that you want, and it will give you a response. Let's say, who is the prime minister of Jamaica? And then its response is, as of my knowledge cutoff date of September 2021, the prime minister of Jamaica was Andrew Holness. However, it's possible that there may have been a change in leadership since then. And since it's a conversational bot, you don't have to rehash what was said before to, to, to tell it that you're talking to it about Prime Minister. You can just say, he still is. And then it responds, thank you for letting me know. As of my current date of February 2023, Andrew Holness is still the Prime Minister of Jamaica. So it has taken this information and it will now feed it back to anybody else who is asking the same thing. So it won't refer to its cutoff date. It will just say, as of February 2023, he's still the Prime Minister. All right, so how can we use this in a very interesting application? Maybe for your business or to build some sort of web application for something. You can find out about a company by just giving the name of the company. So you can find out the CEO, how long the CEO has been the CEO of the company, and the financial health of the company since that CEO has been in power. And say... Grace Kennedy. And this response, here's a profile of Grace Kennedy, the current CEO, and a brief history of the company. Grace Kennedy is a diversified Jamaican multinational conglomerate founded in 1922. The current CEO is Don Webby, born on June 14, 1961, making him 61 years old. And under his leadership, Grace Kennedy has experienced significant growth and it continues to give you a lot of information financially about the company. And that's just with me forming that. And it's still going, as you can see. So that's pretty cool, Kevon. I can see all the excitement around it. And there are so many, like we mentioned earlier, a lot of companies are coming up with alternatives to chat GPT as well. Right. Google launched its own thing. And you have something that you're using at Vota Studios that you developed this? Yes. So OpenAI, which is the creator of chat GPT, they offer a public API, which is an application programming interface for those who are in the tech space would know exactly what it is. It allows you to connect what you're building with something else that someone else owns. So let's say you want to log into Amazon using Facebook, which, you know, sign in with Facebook. Mm -hmm. Now, Amazon is connecting to Facebook via what is known as the API, which allows you which allows them to pull information from Facebook on you so that you don't have to sign up manually, your email or whatever. So it takes all of that, puts it in for you, and signs you in. So that's how it works. So what we did was take the API that is available, and we are able to create and train our own AI bot. What do you call it? We call it Storybook. So what it is, is essentially a 
platform that allows you to write children's storybooks or create any type of story for whether a child or an adult using simply a title and a plot idea. All right, so show us that one. How does that work? All right, let's go. So we're now in the storybook app. I just logged in. I have eight tokens and that's how the storybook app works. It creates a story based on token amount. And just to create one story, it costs one token. So we're gonna create a story and it brings you to the story creation screen where you can select the type of story that you want. If you want a, a comic type of story or a children's story, we're gonna select the comic, then the age range for this type of story. And I'm gonna choose 18 and above. And you now need to put in two important pieces of information, the title of the story and the plot. So I'm gonna say, Kevin concurs. And the plot is, Kevin was finally able to master AI technology and free the gremlins from captivity. Then we click continue, and the AI is now doing its thing, right? We move to the next screen. You can optionally upload an, a photo because it is a storybook. So if you want an image of yourself or somebody to be a part of the story or based on that person, you can upload image, but we won't here. So I'm gonna skip and just go to creating the story. And boom, it's there. Now we're gonna view the story. Just like that. Kevin was a brilliant young man with an aptitude for AI technology. And it goes and goes and goes. So are you making this available for anybody? Can they contact you so they can use this too? Yes, so we have, we actually have a website and it will be available soon. Um, we're going through the final phase of testing and for, for those who have tested it so far, I've really loved it and they gave us really incredible feedback on how we could make it better. So we're looking to launch it by the early March. Very cool, how can people reach you? All right, you can reach us at Voto team at onmail.com through email, or you can visit our website at thevoto, thevoto .co. Awesome, thank you, Kevin. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Here's a recap of Kevin's key points. Businesses are using ChatGPT for the following, writing production scripts, writing books, coding. A token is a value that is used to represent a character AI response. For example, the word cheese. The value of the token amounts to each letter in the word cheese. A token's value can be different based on the amount of words used. That's it for this episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. Check out their website at eximbankja.com or visit my website, kalilareynolds.com, for a summary of this episode.